Why would you say that? I'm I'm actually on Access Hollywood, and they are asking if you and Steve are together, and I'm saying my money's on yes. Welcome back to Housewives Nightcap. We are so excited. We have one of the OGs of the OC. She is a real estate mogul and the queen of Kodo. And guys, the other OG of the OC gives us a call in the middle of the interview to set the record straight on her dating life. So welcome, Gina. Oh, I'm so happy to be here and meet you girls. It's fun. I've watched some of your podcasts. First of all, I feel like we just have to send our congratulations to your new grandchild. Oh my God, he's so precious. She sent me a video of him waking up this morning because she kind of has to shake him awake. He's at one of those low birth weight. You got to eat every three hours, whether you want to or not. I kind of want to be on that program, <laughs> but he's so sweet. He looks so much like his brother McCoy. So it feels like she has a piece of McCoy with her. I remember, you know, I follow Kara and I, sorry, you guys went through that. How is everyone doing? And how you are know, you guys she you know, feeling? She is amazing. She, at the time it happened, she tried to see some good in it, tried to see some good in working out every day and eating healthy. So for her donating, all of his organs and whatever he she could donate she did and then she also started a march of dimes that raised almost fifty thousand dollars to help other children in the NICU so she did that which was great and then when this baby was born her friends to surprise her did something for Will Smith's hospital where they raised almost seventy two thousand all right already to building in the new wing there's a room that's going to have McCoy Bosworth's name on it it was amazing what her neighbors and friends, she has like this army of people around her because literally I would say three, almost three years, she didn't leave the house. She was afraid of COVID while she was pregnant with McCoy. And then she got pregnant three months after McCoy with the new baby. So she was ready to get out of the house when this baby was born. Oh, Gina, we're so happy to see, you know, your daughter is so strong, what she's been through. And we're so happy to see your family welcome this new life. Um, yeah. You know, you guys have been through so much, especially this past year. How did you guys get through all of this? Kara had therapy, a lot of therapy, a lot of good friends. She had a little tribe of girls that showed up every couple hours. She had meal trains. She had so much support from her friends. I was there one time and a box full of ice cream came. It's like, hey. Oh, she's like, get it out of here. <laughs> I don't need all that ice cream. Give it to the neighbors. I mean, it was literally a, a million different flavors of this gourmet ice cream. And she's like, my freezer is not even big enough to hold it. So the, the fans and everybody really gave her a lot of support online too. A lot of women who had lost children reached out to her and kind of told them their stories. So was, she just, she luckily she doesn't keep anything internal. She shares everything. That's great. That's amazing. Well, we wish you so much, like so many blessings to your family with this new baby. We have to talk. It has been 15 years since the Real Housewives of OC, which is insane. Um, how does it feel when you look back at that time? Do you smile when you think about it? <laughs> I smile because it's, you know, you look at the TV now when it's on and it's like seeing home movies of your family. You know, they're there were a lot of mistakes in those beginning years. We didn't know a lot about having cameras follow you around and how you eat on camera. You look funny. And we learned a lot those six years, five years, whatever I was on it. It was a lot of fun. So yeah. it was an enjoyable. Oh, the kids didn't love it as much, but I'm sure they look at it now because you literally if they walk into a restaurant and it's crowded and there's an hour wait, they go, oh, Cara. 20 minutes, 10 minutes, we're going to make a table for you. And so it still has its perks. That's so. so funny. And we do know that Shane is going to be a part of this new special with Andy and the other Bravo kids. So has he told you anything about it? Can you tell us anything? He told me it was really fun and that he didn't know a lot of the other kids in there. Was it Carolyn Manzo's kids? Oh, yeah. He'd never met them and they were little when they were on the show originally, I think he said. And when he was watching the flashbacks of all the different kids when they were little and on the show, he was, because he was older. Did he say anything that like, if he spilled anything about you or said anything about you or anything? 
I think they probably asked him. So I, he didn't say a lot. He just said, I didn't say anything bad about you. I just stressed that you were a single mom and you worked really hard and had a lot of people taking care of us and driving us everywhere. So I'm sure he didn't throw me under the bus. <laughs> no. He's trying no. to get me to move to Florida. So he's not going to be mean to me. So both kids are in Florida or all kids. You have three. Two. Right? I have three. Colton, Colton is temporarily living with me here. Okay. He usually lives in one of my guest houses. But when I sold the last house with guest house, he moved in with me. He said, I'm only staying for two weeks, but I made it really comfortable. And I'm gone so much. I'm either at a guy I'm dating's house or I'm in Florida. So. Ooh. Wait, let's backpedal that a little yes. bit. Yes. The guy you're dating. Oh, I do date. Nobody's special. Nobody's special yet. Oh, okay. So you're still like dating around. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing you know, you know how it goes. You, maybe after a month or so, you realize, okay, I like this guy. We're going to be friends, you know? So I have a lot of friends, the guys that I'll date for a little while and decide, okay, they're just friends. They're not long-term material. So, but I have a lot of great I, friends because I go out a lot. And with COVID, with COVID, I had a really best friend and we just did a lot of hanging out together for yeah. six months. And that was really fun. So you really get to know someone when you can't leave the house and you have to order in. <laughs> well, so. Gina, you look amazing. Um, so any man would be very lucky to snatch you. Well, if you remember when you get older, guys my age are kind of boring and fall asleep at eight o'clock. And I'm one of those high energy people that sleeps five, six hours a night max. So most of them bore me. So I date guys 50, 48 to 52 is, is my range normally. We love a cougar. Like I love that. Also love a cougar. They say that this is something I actually think about. They say that women's sex drive only gets higher and higher as you age and when men's uh, decreases. So this is why older women often want to date younger men. Because I dated a 60 year old and if I got it once a week, that was a lot. It's like, okay, this is not working for me. <laughs> your personality's not working and your lack of, you know, you fall asleep at eight o'clock on the couch isn't working for me either. So no, this Bye-bye. is a real problem. <laughs> So while we're talking about younger men, Lauren, should we ask her our burning question? Yes, I was about to say the same thing. Okay. Same thing. Okay, so we need to know. There are uh, some rumors going around in Housewife World that Vicky is actually dating a 23-year-old, right? Yeah, no. 23-year-old. And she's no. not with Steve anymore. No. I think that's totally untrue. But we um, wanted to know, as her friend, I know you guys still keep in touch. If well, she know. moved recently, and I haven't seen her since she moved. She did text and reach out over the baby, and we did go to lunch, and she said, relationships are hard. I feel like he's drifting away from me. So maybe. I mean, that was a month ago. Maybe. I'll text her while we're doing this real quick. Okay. <laughs> Get the key for us. Huh? Get I love this. Gina is working for us. We need to send her a okay. paycheck here. Yeah, for sure. Oh my God, I love it. But to tell you the truth, if they weren't together, you know how fans are. If they saw Steve at a bar with another girl, it'd be all over the news. So All over. All yeah, over. Very true. And I feel like even if she was spotted with this 23-year-old, we would know that as well. I can't even imagine a 23-year-old, maybe 35, 40, but 23, they're idiots. Sorry, 23-year-olds out there in the world, but they do not have their act together. No, no. no, 15 years younger than her, maybe, because she has energy like a crazy person, too. So I could totally see her with a younger guy. Oh, my God, he's calling me. Get it. Hey, Vic. I just had a weird text from you. Um, that is a weird yeah, text for me. Why would, you, why would you say that? I'm, I'm actually on Access Hollywood, and they are asking me if you and Steve are together, and I'm saying my money's on yes. Yeah, we're here in Mexico together. Woohoo! Well, i got to call you back later because I'm doing an interview. Okay, love you. Bye. How do you like that? My girlfriend picks up the phone and calls me even from Mexico. She's like, why'd you ask me that weird question? 
they're together. We do want to know, speaking of Vicky, I know Vicky and Tamara, they left last season, but it seems like they are trying to get back on the show. Oh, I think they would love to get back on the show. I know Tamara for sure would love to. Um, her life changed a lot when she got off the show. Remember, she sold her house she loved and moved back in. She did all the right things. She sold the big house, got a smaller house. So she was prepared because COVID had hit. And the gym was down, no income coming in. So she that was pretty impressive. I was very impressed that she did that. She's really smart. I've always thought that. Yeah. Do you think they should come back? I mean, do you still watch? Do you still watch? I do a little bit because Bronwyn is a family friend. Okay. I don't watch every episode. I have some catching up to do, but um, I, I don't know. I feel like it's missing a little something. I do love the younger girls. I almost thought there should be two shows because a 50-some-year-old girl's not going to hang out with a 30-year-old, even though I do. I have girlfriends that are really young, and we'll go out and pick up guys together. And <laughs> later on, the guy will find out. It's like, I just Googled you. What the freak? I thought you were the age of all the other girls. You are more fun than them. It's like, yeah, well, ever. do you want me to put a name tag on next time? It says how old I am. <laughs> Not every 50-year-old will date a 60-year-old, you know? They always want to go the other way. You know what it is about you, though, Gina? You're very comfortable in who you are and younger women can are sometimes not you know they're still trying to figure out their who they are but you're very com comfortable and confident and that's why they I'm love you fun they always tell me you're my most fun friend so <laughs> that's always a good thing now yeah. would you i know we were just saying tamra and vicky want to come back would you ever consider coming back i don't think they'd ever put me back on that show but i do believe there is a market and Joe De La Rosa and a couple other girls over the years have tried to put something together where they do not, not just a where are they now, but go do a couple episodes of what are they doing now. You mentioned your friends with Bronwyn. Do you know, um, I know she just broke up with her girlfriend, they're saying. Oh, she did? I didn't see that. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe she went back with her husband. Well, that's the whole thing. Possibly. Possibly. Um, do you think she, sh she will be back on the show or is it something? You oh, I think about? she's fascinating to watch and interesting. And I love how she grew and gave up alcohol and she struggled with that for a lot of her teen years. So I'm just, I'm glad to see that. I mean, look at her body's in amazing shape. She's yeah. got all those kids. So I think she's interesting. Gina, we love reminiscing with you about the like old days. This show has, did you ever think that 15 years this show would become what it is? Well, I always knew it would do well because I had this ego about me. Every commercial I ever did was <laughs> a famous commercial and it ran over and over in every commercial car I did that pay extra for to run at us next session. So I knew people liked our family and I thought it would do well, especially because at the time it happened, you're probably too young to remember, but there was a writer's strike for years years maybe three years so there was no new content we were the only new thing in town because there was no written no right no house housewives of orange what was that one called desperate housewives None desperate of those. housewives yeah yeah they couldn't write them they couldn't film them because of the writer's strike so we got to be on a little bit of network tv to introduce us and then that was it from that it was the only new thing on tv so right right and you guys were really like reality TV was still becoming, you we know. We the very first reality wow. show that was an ensemble. The other one was Ozzy Osbourne and he was just his family. Oh my God, I so, did not know this. Yeah, wow. we knew that. And then I was in the very first music video, five of them. The director who did mine, Tim Newman, he did Little People, California Girls. So he did all of the first music videos. So it was kind of cool. I've always felt like I've been a pioneer and maybe because I will work for free for friends. <laughs> Remember in the beginning, we didn't get paid anything to do this. They told us television network doesn't let us pay reality because then it's not real. You're actors. It's like, huh? Wait, you did not get paid by no, Broadway. No, not the, the first, first season. season. The second <laughs> season, my attorney, Dan Grigsby, entertainment attorney for the Lakers, said okay they can't pay you they can rent your house so then he started doing our contracts for vicky and tamra when she came in he did ours for a few years and every year it went up the house price went up 
quickly, you just gave me a flashback. Lord, I knew, I think we forgot about this when we were prepping for this. When Tamara was mad at you because of the sign and stuff, and she threw the drink at you, it's like an iconic moment in uh, our all of housewives. history. Yeah, yes. all of housewives. Did you yeah. guys ever, did you get past that with her? Oh, of course. Yeah, she okay. literally, the next time we got together, we was at Heather Dubrow's house for a premiere beginning Heather, you know, announcing Heather to the show party. And Kara wore a raincoat <laughs> when she went to talk to Tamara. And Tamara got scared. And her son came running over because they thought Tamara, Tara's getting, you know, Kara's getting ready to attack me or something because she's wearing a raincoat. So, but it was to be funny. Aww, but literally okay. two, three days later, she called and apologized. But okay. It was just something she knew she was going to do it. It wasn't last minute. It was planned because the piece of paper was a blank piece of paper. Her cyst and deceased. She even got the terminology wrong back then. She didn't know much about lawyers. Cyst is a pimple on your face and deceased is dead. You know, she got the words wrong, but it was super funny. Wait, so I it was blank? The her. paper was blank? It was totally blank. It was just something she planned. I had just won something where most popular Orange County Housewife by 86%. And then they all kind of got mad. It's like, what the hell? And it's like, hey, I don't drink and get stupid on TV. Take a note. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, I'm remember, like they would all drink so much. Right. Oh, they that's why it's out of their mind crazy. That's what we love in our housewives. We love a lady that... <laughs> we yeah. love a Bravo loved it, but Gina, the mother, would be saying, Tamara, you've had enough. <laughs> Gretchen, you're going to fall and break your teeth. I mean, I was always doing that, and they were always saying, shh, get Gina away, get Gina away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is not spoiling, she's spoiling all the fun. <laughs> now, do you look back at any of your time filming the show and have any regrets? Like, is there any one moment that you're like, oh, should not have done that? A lot of them were wardrobe things. And remember we were, you know, I was heavier then. I didn't like the way I looked on camera and I probably shouldn't have dated on camera. Some things were just, if you had to do it again, but yeah. you were always critical, I don't have a lot of regrets. It was always a good time and in good spirits and fun, whether we were in Vegas or whatever we were doing, it was always just about let's have fun. And we kind of wanted to be impart a lesson like Shane having a baseball career and Carr going to Berkeley. Those were good lessons and good things to share with public. And then we had the sad things where we had Josh going to jail or the kids getting tattoos in Florida. I said, whatever. And that wraps up this episode of Housewives Nightcap. Guys, make sure you like, subscribe, comment, and follow us for all the details. Bye, guys.